We are more than one week away from a total solar eclipse. More than 31 million Americans in several states live in the so-called path of totality. But watching the eclipse could threaten your eyesight if you're not taking proper precautions. So joining us now is Mike Massimo. Massimino, rather. Sorry, Mike. I've known you for years. Uh, but uh, you are a former NASA astronaut and a professor of mechanical engineering at Columbia University. It's good to see you, my friend. Likewise, Vlad. How are you doing? How's Chanel? Hi, good morning. All right. So uh, it's it's kind of remarkable that we're, we've, we have you on here, Mike, to ask you how you can witness this mm -hmm. moment safely. But there are some people that may not know that may not know, including yeah. uh, a former president of the United States who, uh, during the last solar eclipse uh, back in 2017, <laughs> was photographed looking up into the sky without any eyewear. Yeah. So to avoid doing something like that, what should people be doing to watch or look at an eclipse safely? Yeah, Vlad, well, it's, it's not a good idea to look directly at the sun at any time. It can be harmful to your eyes, but particularly during an eclipse, uh, you have to be careful. And so there are things you can do to enjoy the eclipse. You want, if you, one thing you can do is you can get a, a pair of these approved glasses, right, these eclipse glasses, but you got to be careful because there are some counterfeit ones out there. So make sure you get them from a reliable source. More information on uh, getting these can be found on uh, two websites. One is preventblindness.org uh, and another one is for the uh, American Astronomical Society, AAS.org. You can look there to find out about these types of uh, glasses, but also other things that you can do. You can build a pinhole camera. That's what we had when I was a kid, they told us to do that. You know, there's a cheap, easy way to do it. You can do it out of cardboard. Uh, so that's another way to do it. But be uh, be really careful. Things like uh, binoculars or even uh, cameras, those can be harmful as well, looking through the lens. You need proper filters. So you really want to take precautions because you can damage your eyes permanently by looking directly at the eclipse. How quickly could that happen? It can happen pretty quick. I, well, actually, you might not have symptoms until a few days later because mm. the damage sometimes is uh, will surface a couple days later and can be permanent. So, uh, But it can happen as far as looking at the sun, if the, how long it'll take. Just a few seconds will do it. So be wow. really careful looking at the eclipse, particularly when it's not, the only time it's safe to look up there and you gotta be really careful then too is when it's in total, the total eclipse and the sun is completely covered. But as soon as the moon moves a little bit uh, and you start seeing the corona, the, 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 the ring of fire around the, around the moon during the eclipse, that's where it can be harmful again. So yeah. be really careful. It's a great event. You want to enjoy it, but you want to enjoy it safely. It's just so interesting to me, Mike. Uh, when I was a kid, too, in the 70s, uh, that, that's how we, we did those pinhole cameras. I, I, I yeah. have very fond memories of being in grade school. And this was for lunar eclipses, because there have been more mm. of those, I think, yeah. than total solar eclipses. Um, yeah. but, but we sat there, and I think we made them out of, a, uh, of an oatmeal um, container, yeah. right? And, yeah. and, and that's yeah. how I first learned that you should never, ever look at an eclipse, at whether directly, lunar yeah. or solar, without yeah. using something like a pinhole camera or special eyewear. So that's why I'm like, what are people doing looking at the uh, eclipse without that kind of eyewear? Are there people who actually yeah. use telescopes to look at an eclipse? You can, but you got to know what you're doing. If you're a professional observer and you have the right filters to protect your eyes, you can do that. But, you know, for most of us, we don't have that kind of equipment. And so, Again, if you can get an approved set of glasses like this or use a pinhole camera, you can enjoy it safely. But uh, for the professionals that have the right equipment, whether it's for their, uh, for their uh, cameras or for their uh, telescopes, they can get pretty, that's how we're going to get really good shots of them. So let the professionals worry about that stuff, and you can look at the pictures later, and we can try to just enjoy it safely, the, the rest of us. And Mike, we know that you're a verified source on this matter because you actually overcame some eye concerns yourself to become an astronaut. Tell us a bit more about that. Oh, yeah, my eye concerns were different, though. This is back in the old days with NASA when you had to be able to see pretty well without glasses or contacts. All those rules have gone away. In fact, NASA, in the next couple of days, they're closing uh, the, the time for application. So anyone out there who wants to be an astronaut, get your application. I think it's the next day or two they're looking for another astronaut class, and they do that every few years. Hey, but Mike, back then, you. when I applied, you had, to, you had to see pretty good without glasses or contacts, and, and I needed to go through some vision training to be able to pass the eye exam. But that's not a concern any right. longer. So, Mike, when you are um, mm -hmm. up in space, I mean, you're not always wearing protective eyewear, right? So what happens when you are closer to some of these celestial objects than we are here on Earth? We actually are, Vlad, believe it or not. Um, when, we, uh, when we're doing things where we have to look up or we have to maybe look at the very bright sky or maybe into the sun, we have, for rendezvous, like when we used to do rendezvous with the Hubble Space Telescope or with 
uh, the, the space station, we would have very dark sunglasses with welder's inserts. These were the darkest, you could not walk around with these things normally. They only, because you couldn't see anything. It really blocked, blocked out all light pretty much. So we would use those very dark approved welder's glasses in order to do a rendezvous. And when we were out spacewalking, if the sun was near us or might be in our eyes, we had a, we had a sunshade and we had a gold visor <laughs> that would come down, we could put down, we could deploy that, so we could see what, what, we're, what we were doing. So we certainly did uh, have eye protection uh, when we were in space as well. And uh, it's, you can't, you can't, you don't wanna, you don't wanna make that risk of harming your eyes uh, while you're out there working, whether you're on, you know, on, uh, enjoying the eclipse on the ground or, or if you're out there in space working. For sure. Mike Massimino, thanks so much. You bet. Thanks, thanks for Mike. having me. You bet. Well, many are also traveling to see this rare event, which could pump an estimated $1.1 billion into local economies. CBS News correspondent Nancy Chen has more. In Rochester, New York, the buzz is going far beyond the beer at Warbuck Brewery. I think people do really embrace the <laughs> fact that it's kind of a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Owner John Erlob's latest creation, Totality Black Lager, a limited-edition drink to celebrate the eclipse. Love you guys. It seems like people are coming into town. They want to gather around something. Might as well have a beer while you're at it. Beer is kind of a social thing, so I think that's perfect, too. And I think as people travel into town, they want to make sure that they can tell their family or their kids or their grandkids that they were in Rochester, New York on April 8th, 2024. Named as one of the best places to watch the eclipse, the city's population could more than double over the weekend, with three to 500,000 visitors. Hotels have largely been sold out for months. Your job revolves around the eclipse. 24-7, 365, at least until April 9th. Dan Schneiderman is the Eclipse Partnerships Coordinator for the Rochester Museum and Science Center, which is planning a three-day festival. What is the sense of awe that it inspires? There is something that kind of hits you at the heart. It's just an, not only a scientific phenomenon, but an emotional one as well. What happens during an eclipse? So when the geometry works out, the moon will pass directly in front of the sun and block it out. During a total solar eclipse, the moon will completely block out the sun's disk, causing not quite a nighttime effect, it's like a deep dusk. Hailed by some as the travel phenomenon of the year, up to 4 million people could journey to take in the eclipse around the U.S., with Delta and Southwest among those offering special trips to see it from the sky. There's been a 1,000% increase in Airbnb searches for stays along the path of totality, and Texas alone could see up to a million visitors. Experts compare the tourism impact to holding 50 Super Bowls around the country simultaneously. I've never seen um, an event draw so many people to put together. Rochester Mayor Malik Evans sees it as an opportunity to showcase his community, one that's expecting to rake in anywhere between 10 to 12 million dollars next weekend. What does it mean to you to be mayor of the city during this time? It's very humbling to be just a part of this history. Um, and I hope that it's something that future generations will look back on and say, wow, they did it right back in 24. They knew how to party. They knew how to have a good time. So that is a great opportunity to market our city from an economic development standpoint, but also as a place where people may want to live one day. I'm hoping that someone can say, I chose to live in Rochester because I was there during that eclipse and I decided to never go home. 